Hello there and welcome to Complete Games with me James, hope you guys are all doing well and we continue with Scorched Earth and the Explorer Note series. Yesterday we started the journey of Sir Edmund Rockwell and went through the first half of his diary. Sir Edmund Rockwell is the survivor that wrote all of the recipes for consumables and kibbles on the island map and is most famous for his mind wipe tonic. He appears to be a chemist from 19th century London and writes his notes in a cursive English style. Before we conclude Rockwell's story, I just want to remind you that I'm now on Twitter. And for more news, updates on when I stream, both here and on Twitch, follow me there. Thank you. And moving back into part two, when we left Rockwell yesterday, he'd been taken prisoner by the Burning Phoenix clan. He decided to help some of the prisoners that he was locked up with, if only to stop some of the noise and whining. So we continue the Rockwell records from notes 16 to 30. At last, I can hear myself think. The guards have moved me to a private cell, and while they have not divulged the reason for my transfer, I suspect that they have took notice of my medical expertise. I caught them staring in my direction on several occasions as I worked. It seems that doctors are in high demand in these lands. I suppose that's no great surprise. The island was no different. No matter, while my skills in the realm of medicine are more in line with a field medic than a true physician, I shall continue to play the role as long as it serves me. After days of travel, we have finally arrived at the Burning Phoenix Clan's compound. And while my former peers were shuffled into slave pens, I stood before the clan's leader. I'd heard tales of the once great Tartar empires. Though I had never travelled to their lands, by all appearances, Tamar is cut from the same cloth as the fabled Khans. He was at once imperious and casual, questioning me with impatience from a throne of hide and bone. Naturally, he was impressed by my intellect and gentlemanly demeanour. Granted, he did not say so aloud, but I was escorted to a small, private chamber instead of a cell. Surely that says as much. I had been pondering why Timar required the services of a doctor. He seemed to be in excellent health, and I had seen no patients since I arrived. Well, now I shall ponder no longer. Tamar has a wife, and she's with child. I suppose that even bloodthirsty raiders can fall in love, or at the very least, desire a family. The whole affair would be rather quaint were I not expected to care for the woman and deliver the child. Should either the child or the woman die during birth, I fear that I will follow them in short order. Nazarene is quite different from her husband. She is a timid little flower of a woman, or rather, she would be if she were not many months pregnant. I'm still undecided as to whether my timing is impeccable or unfortunate. A few weeks from now, Tamar may have had no need for a doctor, but as it stands, I've been thrust into an unfamiliar scenario with scant time to prepare. Despite my unpleasant circumstances, this whole affair is rather intriguing. I never considered the possibility of new generations being born on the Ark, yet clearly it was inevitable. Like any common animal, humans have the urge to procreate. How else could the species endure? Rockwell, old bean, you've done it again. Both mother and child made it through. Tamar is a proud father, and your head is still attached to its shoulders. Why, I was even a guest of honour at Tamar's celebratory feast. I cannot say that I enjoyed the blood sport that serves as the Burning Phoenix's entertainment, but the food was delectable and I was sure to seize upon Tamar's momentary goodwill by filling his ears with whispers of obelisks, artifacts and the untold power they grant to mortal men. It may take time for those thoughts to turn to action, but with constant care, I may yet turn him into my unwitting general. The silver tongue of Sir Edmund Rockwell has prevailed again. After spending far too long watching the Burning Phoenix enslave and decimate helpless caravans and villages, I have convinced Timar to test his might against the Guardian of the Obelisk. I admit, I am somewhat anxious. Timar is not the commander that Mr. Nerva was, and should he fall, I shall fall with him. Yet I have little choice, and the rewards of success are worth the risk. The Obelisks, the Starlight Sanctuary, and that precious ore shall be the foundation of my legacy as a scientist. Gentlemen and explorer, I am sure of it. I found it. I really found it. Raw, untainted samples of that same mysterious ore from the sanctuary. That fearsome beast must have been guarding it. 
thank the heavens for Tamar and his berserk savagery. When he leapt from the back of his wyvern, I thought he was surely doomed, but the madman actually managed to grab hold of that monster's horns and turn its eyes into a bloody mess. I've never seen such brutally effective barbarism. Many of his band did not survive the encounter, of course, but that was to be expected. Progress requires sacrifice, and whether those brutes know it or not, their deaths have helped humanity leap into the future. This ore is simply extraordinary. It's warm to touch, even during those cold desert nights, and it pulses, as though it had its own heartbeat. It's at once light and more sturdy than any other natural material I have encountered. The uses one could find for such a substance. I shall have to name it at some point. What would do? Rock William? Edmonium? A dilemma for another time. For now I have more pressing matters. Tamar and his burning phoenix savages have played their part. I cannot remain in their custody. It's time for the great warrior chief to receive his just reward. Alas, poor Tamar. He was so focused on celebrating his victory over one foe that he never saw his greatest threat. Now he lies beneath the severed head of the beast he vanquished, eyes bulging and blood seeping from his open mouth. At least, that's how I imagine him. I did not stay to admire my handiwork. As soon as the first group of burning phoenix warriors succumbed to their poison feast, I stole away into the night. Edmonium and artifact in tow serves those ruffians right, I say. They never did treat me with the propriety that a gentleman and scholar of my calibre deserves. This desert is better off without them. As my withdrawal from the Burning Phoenix camp demanded haste, I did not have the time to double check my supplies. It appears that I shall have to do some hunting. No matter, I may not be as spry as when I felled a charging rhino on the plains of the Serengeti, but with the small armoury I managed to abscond with, I can surely manage. I had planned on trading those weapons for information as soon as I encountered a peaceful tribe, but I can spare a few rounds of ammunition. Despite my limited equipment, I have managed to run some initial tests on Edmonium. Based on my observation, a typical forge may not be enough to smelt a sample of Edmonium ore into any sort of usable ingot. I suspect it has extremely strong metallic bonds, and therefore a much higher melting point than any conventional metallic element. I must find a proper base of operations where I can run more extensive experiments. I mustn't be over eager however, I have limited supplies and… drat, I shall have to ruminate on this later. A sandstorm may be brewing and I have no desire to be caught in it. Confounded weather, not only did that sandstorm separate me from my steed, but when it cleared I was beset upon by none other than that traitorous Miss Walker herself. Oh, she put on quite an act spouting all sorts of nonsense about how good it was to see me. Rubbish. I see right through her ruse. I am certain that she is after my Edmonium. The only reason she's not simply looted it from my corpse is that she requires my superior intellect to understand it. Well, two can play this game, Miss Walker. I can fill the role of benign old scientist for a time, but I shall not be betrayed again. I'm glad I possess the foresight to hide my presence from Miss Walker after her capture on the island. She clearly believes I never learned of her betrayal. By cunningly taking advantage of this fact, I have managed to completely deceive the deceiver. The grim old bat she travels with is another matter. I often catch her glaring in my direction, her eyes sharp and mistrusting. If I could, I would deal with her as I dealt with Tamar. But I fear she is far too observant. For now, I must maintain my deception as best I can. I may have given Miss Walker too much credit. Although I carelessly allowed her to catch sight of my Edmonium ore samples, she was more interested in the artifact I possess. I should have realised this sooner. Miss Walker's speciality is biology. She would not recognise the unique properties of Edmonium if it hit a square in the forehead. That fact has eased some of my tension, even if Miss Walker seeks to take advantage of my genius. She's focusing on the wrong discoveries. So as long as I'm careful in my studies of Edmonium, I shall remain miles ahead of her. I cannot wait to be rid of that glowering menace of a woman, this so-called Wally Al-Azwad. I suspect the feeling is mutual, 
She has offered little in the way of farewells while seeing us to this Ark's entrance to the Starlit Sanctuary. Things will be much easier once Miss Walker and I have parted ways with the Desert Witch. I suspect Miss Walker is thoroughly oblivious to both the wonders of Edmonium and my knowledge of her underhanded scheming back on the island. She can continue to fiddle with trinkets and relics. I may assist her if it suits me. Meanwhile, I shall unlock the secrets of the most extraordinary element in the universe right under her nose. And that concludes the notes of Sir Edmund Rockwell in part two of our note read-through for Scorched Earth. Don't forget to join me again tomorrow when we'll be going through the notes of Rhea. She was a priestess from ancient Egypt and her notes were written in hieroglyphs. Both the story of John Decaia and Rhea take part before Rockwell and Helena had arrived on Scorched Earth and give us an insight into what happened to the cities that are all buried there. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new here and you're enjoying the Ark Survival content from myself. But until tomorrow night, I'm James from Complete Games and I'll see you.